John chapter 16 is what I'm going to be talking some from this morning. For those of you that like to come your Bible, you can look at Matthew on that one. And Mark, John. I don't think we'll be in Luke today. The first Corinthians will be there for something. So for those distances that you gotta travel, you might want to mark first Corinthians chapter 12. John chapter 16. I'm going to read the very first three verses of this thing first, and then we're going to get on down in it. These things have I spoken to you that you should not be found, not you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that they doeth God a service. Now, they're going to put you out of the synagogue. Christ is telling his disciples this today. It wasn't too long after that that the Apostle Paul, which was Saul, was doing that very thing. He was putting them out of it. You see, so we're thinking this all has to take place today now. No, this is already something that's been taking place. It took place with the Apostle Paul. He was killing people because they were uplifting Christ. And that's what the disciples were doing. They were going into the synagogue and they were uplifting Christ. The people that were stalking for Christ, they were in trouble because they knew that if Paul was not there or Saul at that time, was going to get them. If he caught up with them doing that, they were going to be murdered for the sake of the gospel. Well, it ain't changed. There's people all over the world right now that's still being beheaded for the cause of Christ. You don't hear about it that much because the devil don't want you to hear it. There's a lot of people. You go over there with them Hindus worshiping cows and start preaching Christ and see how quick you have to run and hide the cut. I have a friend of mine that was overseas quite a bit. He rode on them, them little wagon beds and stuff with across the rivers and canals and stuff that was full of, of them, uh, uh, what do you call it, fish, them piranhas. Just eats the flesh. And water was coming in, he's afraid the thing's going to leak. He's going to, he said, Lord, I just about as soon be beheaded as be eaten by fish. You know, I mean, he's thinking this stuff as he's going, but through faith in Christ, he just be right on going. He never would stop his trips. He'd just keep going every time. He'd go right across that river every time. He'd go right back in there. I'm thinking, out there looking at him. Go, Come on in here, big boy. But the Apostle Paul was going around killing people. And some of the disciples were seeing it. Peter was seeing it. He knew it was happening. And he was knowing this, and that's what the Apostle Paul was doing. He was killing them because he thought he was doing God a favor. Now, how many times have you seen people today that's supposed to be your brother or your sister in Christ? Amen. They will do everything they can do to kill your own ministry. Amen. Because they don't like the way that you do your ministry. It's different from the way that they believe it. You're going to find that everywhere you go. Jeff just experienced some of that. I know they did. They didn't like the way that he was doing his ministry, so they experienced some of it. I'm not talking about Catholic Church. Man, he's doing great right there. But some of this has already been experienced. They figure that they're doing the world, the church, and everybody a favor by stopping it because nobody has a right to tell that to anybody that does not want to hear it. Okay? But we're going to get deeper in there before we get even before we quit. And these things they will do unto you, the disciples, because they have not known the Father nor me. Underline that. For they have not known the Father or me. If anybody is coming against you because of the gospel of Christ, it's because they don't know who Jesus is. They say they do. They say they've given their heart to Christ. But they have not done that yet because if they did, they would not be doing this to you. Because regardless of what denomination or what abomination you belong to, everything reverts back to if you're not in Christ, you're out of Christ. If you're not in there. And if you're not in Christ, you can't do Christ any good. You can't do God any good. You cannot pray to God because God is not going to listen to you because they all three are one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You're not going to listen to any of them. Unless you're in Christ, you've got to be in the cross. You can't ignore. 
ignore the cross of Calvary and expect to hear the truth of God. It will not happen. Now if you'll hang on a few minutes, I'll tell you and show you how that you will not hear the word of God in the truth. Okay? It's easy. Going down a few lines here. Okay. And there will come one that will reprove the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on him, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Now there will become one and you don't see him. Like you won't see me anymore. Jesus is going to go away to the Father. And when he goes away to the Father, you won't see him anymore. Am I correct? Well, the ones that he sends back, you ain't going to see him either. That's he'll be. You ain't going to see him either. Why? Because he's a spirit. Well, why is the spirit? Because God is a spirit, and him that worships God must worship him in spirit and in truth. There's no getting around it. Okay? You can't do God a service by doing something in the flesh. You're going to do him a service by doing something through the spirit and using your flesh. Okay? That's the way that it works. Not because we desire to do better and we just don't, it just don't work out that way. I desire to do good just like the Apostle Paul did. He said, I, among sinners, I'm the cheapest. I desire to do good. He thought he was doing good for God and he was killing God's, God's servants, his prophets, his apostles. But yet he was doing it on himself with this service. What did Jesus say to him on the road to Damascus? Saul! Why do you persecute me? Saul said, Lord, he wasn't so big and bad now, but Lord, that's how I'd have been saying it. I said, oh, no. Lord, I'm glad I wasn't that dumb. But you know, there have been times in my life where I saw other ministers out there doing things I didn't like, and I couldn't wait to tell somebody about it. You know what I had to do? I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for being this way, this corrupt. I don't want to be like that. Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin on. I don't, I want forgiveness. He said, you repented, you're forgiven, don't do it no more. Lo and behold, there wouldn't be no time I'll do it again. I'd say, Lord, it's me again. It's me again. I know evil communications corrupt good manners, but I just can't seem to stop it. There's only one way that you will ever defeat the devil. And you have to face him face to face. You listen to me? You face him face to face. Don't turn your back to him. Face him face to face in his name of the blood of Jesus. Point your finger at him and say, I'm saved by the blood, that atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid the price I have been redeemed. you got to get out of my face and leave me alone. You might want to wrestle with me a little while, but son, I ain't even going to swing one punch at you because God in his spirit is going to take care of you. I know where your doom is. I know where your domain is. You are going to hell. You're going to burn. But I know the people that you have, have misled in this world today, along with some of the people that are put into office to take care of people. I'm not talking about the government of the world. I'm talking about the government of the churches. There's people that's been put into the churches to take care of the governor, government of the world, and especially starting it in the church, and they misled the people in the church to believe in something that's a part of life. Why? Because gang. Make it easier on us, preacher, and we'll come to your church. And all of a sudden, it's easier. Until the next pastor's election comes around, and make it a little easier, and he's still got two hearts on us, and we'll vote you in. And this stuff keeps on going until it snowball downhill to where half the church is going to hell. Not the church of God. Not the church of God. God's church will never go to hell. 
I'm talking about the assembly of a body that's in there right now that ain't no bit, bit more saved than anybody else in the world is. Why? Because there's too much confusion inside that, and God is not any author of any confusion. Bible to back it up. we got to get deeper into this thing. Now, what I told you about at the very beginning, if you can't see Christ now, and you can't see the one that he's going to see, sin. When we get down to verse 13, it said, How be it, he, the spirit of truth, is come. Or when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you into all truth. Somebody go praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How be it, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Oh. Man. I'm about to have a Holy Ghost head. He will not speak of himself. How many times have you heard people pop up now? Holy Ghost told me to do this.
that's not leadership. That's telling them what to do. Now, if I go, go to them and I say, now look, this is the way I believe that we need to do it. I'm going to take the lead. I want you to follow me. Then you depend on whether you go or you don't. I guarantee you when the Red Sea split, them people, <laughs> the Father knows us. They followed him. Even Pharaoh thought all of it too. It didn't work out for him, but he was, they was following, they just followed Pharaoh. They were following the leader, the shepherd, is who they were following. Moses didn't stand on the bank for the water and say, okay, go. When they saw that water split, they knew right then that was their way out of our people to go. I don't know whether Moses went first or whether he went last, but I guarantee you he was standing in the water. He was standing, do you hear me? I said he was standing in the water. We're talking about that spiritual water. The same kind of stuff that Christ was baptized in. The spiritual water. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's where it's all at. We're going to get some deep stuff right here about the church in just a moment. You're going to realize probably more this morning when you leave here, and I hope you do, that you have more respect for the Spirit of the Lord in the church because I want to tell you something. The Spirit of the Lord is all that's holding this thing together. Amen. The Holy Spirit is in every heart in this building. Yes. And it's what's holding this thing together. Without that, we're out of here. And so I said, well, I hope we don't ever remove the Spirit. I hope He does one day. That's like... I used to preach, and I'd get up and I'd get to preach, and man, I'd just have a spell. I'd just shout all over the place. And even run a little bit, because that's the way we did it. It was all right. Well, the other night I was praying. Oh, thank you, we go again. I was praying, Lord, I sure would like to have a shout back. I sure would like to have a parent's brought and woo! Just one or two. And he said, there'll be plenty enough time for that when you get up here. I said, forgive me. I want you to teach the way I called you to teach. I have to do that. And you know what? I can rejoice more now knowing that I'm pleased to do the way that God's pleased with me. And I don't have to reach out any farther than what I was for what I got. I got it right now. Be happy with what I got. And you know something else. You cannot lead nowhere if you're demanding. You can't lead in your home. If I was instructing Mavis every day on what she had to do, I'd never get anything out of her. There would be no unity. She'd be sitting one. And in her heart she'd be one. And all it's going to do would be to split us. What do you think the biggest problem in the church is? Not enough direction from the pulpit to the Holy Spirit. And too much input from the body of Christ, the people out there. They think that they got it together and everybody needs to teach it the way that they believe it or they're out of here. They thought they were in the church no pastor. Well, sooner or later, you're going to run out of feet and people to preach to you because you ain't listening to no And God will send you a pastor after your own heart. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. You know, if you don't have unity, if I didn't have unity in my house, I couldn't have unity nowhere. None of my kids, I mean, none of my grandkids, and my kids, they don't please me all the time. But I'm going to tell you something right now. There's never a moment that goes by in my life that I'm not concerned about being my wife, leading them by our own leadership. And not with what we tell them what to do and how to do. 
I've had people ask me why, and I hate you. You treat your son the way that you treat him. I love him. I love him. Yeah, but I said, wait a minute. God loves me. God loves me. He still loves me. Even though I'm not turning my back on my son. And I'm going to tell you something right now. My son is a whole lot different human being today because of it. It's took it, take me some while. But it's coming around. You can see it. You can See when he calls his mom, calls to her. Has things on his heart. Because the very thing that I did for him, he's doing for his granddaughter right now. If it hadn't been for maybe it's not stepping in when we did, he could have very well been in the same place that Justin was in. I don't have any regrets. I don't have any regrets because our leadership, our leadership, Lena has seen it. And there's been a time she said, time to do said, Dad, I don't see why you do it. I said, be your son. And she's figured it out. She's figured it out. And it doesn't matter if Daddy Boy is still the Lord. Let's go, Father. And he said, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you the things that are to come. Now, whatever it is that he, he sees, he's going to bring it out. He's going to tell you about it. And what he sees, he's going to take it of, of what Jesus is, it's what's mine. And what is Jesus' possession? <coughs> if you wanted to ask me, what belongs to Jesus? It would be the cross. Why? Because and nobody had to tell me this because the cross of Calvary is what conquered it all for Christ. When he went there and gave his life on the cross of Calvary, that was all I needed to be born again, to be redeemed by the power of his blood. That's all that I needed. So that was his. My redemption is belongs to Christ. And he sent me back the Spirit, the Spirit, Him, the Spirit, to lead me. So if I've already got the Spirit, now let me ask you something. Is, if we already have the Spirit, why would we pray, Lord, lead me into all truth? You already have the Spirit. Because what we want to do is we want to pray, Lord, lead me into some truth. The part I want to hear. Not the part that you want me to hear, but just the part that I want to hear. Some truth is the planning. That's all I need. Kind of like the guy that belongs, he takes his Bible to the church up every Sunday morning and he sleeps in the room there. That's all he's after. That's all he's going to church for. Get somebody off the back. Now, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and show it unto who? Unto you. He will receive of mine, and he will show it unto you. He's going to, he's going to receive it off of him, okay? But he's going to give it to me. That's what the Spirit of Truth is going to do. It's not up to Jesus to come back down here and bring it to you. He sent the Holy Spirit down here to do that. And as he received it from Christ, then the Holy Spirit brings it and gives it. And the first thing he's going to tell you in the middle of this turmoil is, he's still there. He's still up there. He hasn't changed. And when Jesus died on the cross, buried and resurrected from the grave, that means he was victorious. He's not still in the ground. The victory belongs to Jesus. So he took his victory, gave it to the Spirit, the Spirit's given it to us, and now we are walking victorious in the promises of God, which is the new covenant. Everybody say new covenant. Saved by grace through faith. Not of works. Lest any man should boast, it is a gift of 
God. So next time somebody tells you you ain't been saved, say, so you know what you're talking about. God give you salvation. How do you give you salvation on the cross of Calvary? How did that happen? Through the blood of Christ. How do you know? The Bible told me so, and the Spirit confirmed it because it's the all truth. Every bit of it's the truth. There's not one word in here that's a lie. Somebody said, well, there's places in our work the Holy Spirit contradicts itself. No, it's not. The Spirit of the Lord will not lie to you. He will not contradict himself. He will not tell you that something's all right and it's not all right. Well, I know I was going to part of not to drink drinking and the Holy Spirit told me I was still saved. I said, he didn't tell you you was right with God. I can tell you that right now. Just like I told a man one time that, that called me at three hours in the morning. When he called me, he was, he was talking about, he was drunk then, two o'clock in the morning, telling me that some woman stood up at the church and called him, took him out after church was over with, and told him, said, don't worry about your wife there, brother so-and-so. said, the Lord told me that in a year your wife was coming back to you. I said, the Lord told her that? He said, yeah, I said, no, he didn't. How come? I said, well, he told you you could lay drunk for another year if you wanted to. And God would have never done that. So I'm telling you that that is what it is. What's the matter with Randy? That's not the way that it is. When God says it, it's settled. And the Holy Spirit is never going to going to contradict the Godhead. He's never going to contradict his own words. If he tells you that Ricky's mask is black and it matches Jerry's, then, hey, Jeff's trying to go on too. Then if he's telling you about that black mask, then what that means is that they're not the black militia just because they're wearing black. Then he's right. But if he tells you they got a mask on, they're probably part of that black militia box. That he's the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit knows where the devil is at. Hello? He don't have to look under every rock. Some might say that. The Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost knows where the devil's at. I will not forget that. I cross my heart. He don't have to go looking for the devil. Now, if he don't have to go to the devil looking for him, why can't we just depend on, on the Holy Spirit to reveal him to us? Amen. Ain't he supposed to be here? Amen. The next time that dude shows up, Holy Spirit, please, allow me to have the vision of knowing he's there to tempt me and bring me down from what I'm on. I ain't something saying something out that you're on either because if you're on Christ, you ain't coming out of that unless you bring your own self down and the devil but the Holy Spirit would never do it. The devil would be right there trying to do it every time you turn around, he's not going to do it. Now, the profession of faith that we make, Matthew chapter 16 and 17, uh, 16, verse 17. I'm going to turn back and read that. Now, when we read this, it says, He glorified me, and all things of the Father have are mine. Therefore, said, said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you a little while, and ye shall not see me again, and, and a little while, and ye shall see me. He goes, I go unto my Father. Now, he's going to show himself again. But this thing here with Christ, as we're talking, and he said, in the spirit, he said, he'll take a mind and he'll give it to you. Okay? When he said in the spirit, it got me to thinking about when we get into uh, Second Corinthians, we'll get some more of this in just a few moments about him not contradicting himself. You remember when Peter was, was there and, and, uh, and Jesus said unto him in verse 17, he said, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Let's start our Simon for John, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, 
but my Father which is in heaven. Now the Holy Spirit hadn't come yet. Verse 14, he said, and they said, and some said, they say you're John the Baptist, some Elijah, other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar John, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Notice he said, flesh and blood. At that moment, Jesus was flesh and blood. And he asked Peter, who do men say that I am? Or who do you say that I am? You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Jesus said well, blessed you are, man, because the Holy Spirit taught you that. The Holy Spirit. Now watch what this happens next. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, that means that you, the church will grow on what God reveals through the Spirit to the church. Now what does the Spirit reveal to the church? The cross of Calvary. It doesn't reveal the Baptist denomination or the, the cowboy church or the Catholic church. It doesn't reveal that. What it reveals is the cross of Calvary. And anything else that the church is built up on is sinking sand. It won't sink. It has to be the cross. Without the cross, forget it. Without the cross, there is no spirit. If without the cross, Jesus did not die. Jesus was not buried. He did not raise from the dead. He did not ascend into the heavens. And he did not send back the Holy Spirit. There was no Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Ghost fell over the upper room. So the cross has to be it. Does that make sense? Okay, the cross has to be it. So it said, and he, and, 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 and watch this now. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be loosed, bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Notwithstanding, how many times has the Lord revealed things to you in your family life, and you'd rather listen to the devil than to listen to what the wisdom of the Lord was? Ah, God ain't going to get me for that. He ain't going to make men die because Adam and Eve make fruit and eat it. They are. Every day there's people die because Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. No getting away from it. It's a promise. It's a covenant. If you eat at this tree, you're going to die. Now, is that what he said? That was the first covenant they did. Don't eat the tree. Leave the pillow. Now, let's go over to uh, First Corinthians. I think I'll... I want to talk a little bit about the gifts of the Spirit because this word, it seems to be... Many different things going around about the Spirit that is just not untrue. I mean, they are untrue. They're not the truth. Verse 12, the first Corinthians, this is now concerning spiritual gifts, brother. I will not have you take it. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, even as you were led. Notice that word there that says, Led. Led. It seems like it's a whole lot easier to be led out of church than it is to be led in one. Ralph said something to me uh, last week when I told him that we were going to try and open this up. How many of you think we're doing this? Open this up this week when we come back in the sanctuary. You know what? That's what he told me. Ralph said, you know, some preacher, he's not to see why that you're 
we're going to do this. He said, because when the people start staying away for, for a while, he said, it gets to be a whole lot easier for them to never come back. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. And he knew me and him was on the same page. He knew it already. Because I hadn't said it. My wife knew I was on that page. I told her, I said, there may be just somebody in the church that needs to come that one Sunday morning and pray. And I want to make sure the doors in the church are open so that they can do it. I never one time through this pandemic tell her that she needed to go to church with me. But look who's with me this morning. You see, she got a hold of that chair. Because she, she remembers back when we got out of church one time, it got to be real easy for us not to go back. Real easy. Real easy. You know, I thank God that I'm back. But I think I thank God that I was led back into the spirit, not the same thing that I was led out with. Amen. Evil led me out, but the spirit of the Lord led me right back in. And I'm stronger now than I ever was in my life in the Lord. The foundation of the cross is stronger under my feet than it ever has been in my life. And I'm glad it's solid. If I'm standing on it, if I fall, I'm going to hit the rock. I ain't going to hit nothing else but rock if I fall. And I ain't planning on falling anytime soon. Let's go to the bit father this. Wherefore I give, it, give, give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus, Jesus at first. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. That should be another that you can understand what I was preaching to you earlier about. That's the only way you can say it is by the Holy Ghost. And what good does it do you to say it by the Holy Ghost if you don't feel the Holy Spirit? None. If you talk about Jesus and still uplifting the Holy Ghost, you uplift Jesus through the Holy Ghost. You don't uplift the Holy Ghost. Jesus sent him. You might say, well, the Holy Spirit told me to go do this. But you already had a, a feeling that that's what you needed to do? Or did you ask God if there was danger there? Or was you even concerned? You just got to go in. You know, a lot of times when we go in and listen to the wrong voice, if the Holy Spirit is calling you out, He's going to lead you out. He's not going to open the doors at you. He's going to lead you out. Unless you're revoked in another way. If you're booted out the door, don't blame it on the Holy Spirit. And don't blame it on the leadership of God unless He's trying to lead you out of something. That boot. If it's Him, He'll bring you back. He'll bring you back. And you'll be a lot stronger than you ever was before. Now let's go deeper. Now there are diversities of gifts with the same spirit. This is one that, that I want to talk about for just a moment. There is, a, there is different types of gifts. And all of them are by the same spirit. The Holy Spirit. Not all the spirits are the same. And not everybody is going to have all of those spirits. Because if you had all those spirits running around your head at one time, you'd be one of the most confused people in the world. There's one Holy Spirit, but many different gifts of the Spirit. Now, I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit will not manifest other gifts inside you, but He won't do it at the same time. I know for a fact that I've had the gift of prophecy a few times. And I've had it a few times right here since I've been in this church and every one of us come true. I would admit that 
there's been times that there's been discernment that he's given me, there's been wisdom that he's given me, and he did it in the time that, of the hour that I was in need. The time that it should be used is when he brought it forward to me for me to do it. People ask me a question, and when he asks me a question, I have an answer. And I don't have to dig and stumble around very long to find it either. I can usually <laughs> find it pretty quick because of the Holy Spirit moving inside me. Somebody said, well, now you're boasting. No, I'm not. I'm looking up to Christ. He's the one who sent the Spirit. I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't have the, I don't deserve the Holy Spirit. Somebody asked me the other day, said, how you doing, Brother Daddy? I said, a lot better than I deserve. Huh? You ever think about that? A whole lot better than I deserve. But I'm doing okay by the grace of God. Now, with that being said, if if you got 15 people up prophesying at one time, and they're all prophesying, prophesying something else on one another, who are you going to know how to listen to? Are you going to know whether it's the Spirit of the Lord or not? Is there confusion in it? If it is, chances are, thank the Lord. Same way we're talking in tongues. Amen. Paul said that's the least. <laughs> that's the least. And all of a sudden, the least became first. Okay? So this is the only people. It said, and there are diverse types or diversities, if you want to say, of operation but in the same God which worketh all in all. Now, the operations of the Spirit, okay, the gifts are the same Spirit, the Holy Ghost will not uh, uh, contradict itself. He'll not tell you that sin is okay. The abilities and the powers of the gifts are preached by the operations of the energy of the Holy Ghost. Divine unto every man the several ability. I've got to read some more. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to profit with all. What good would it be to do something to profit the church if there's no need for it? If everybody sitting in the church is already in there, it's not going to profit the church in any way. Why would it do any good? Why would it do good for the Holy Spirit to prophesy to somebody in the church and say, now there's somebody here tonight that's having a real serious problem with glaucoma. If everybody in the church is blind, wouldn't make any sense, would it? What difference would it make if, some, if somebody stood up in the church? God has given somebody in the church a vision and they need to stand up and say it. Every person in the church is going to stand up. I believe the Reds is going to win next year. Or I believe it'll be, Burroughs will be back with the vengeance, man. How about the Lord's coming back? to be the vision that the Holy Spirit has given everybody. We need to tend to His business. You know, when we get in our minds into how the Holy Spirit should work, we can't work the Holy Spirit in our church until we get out of that comfort zone. Okay. One thing about the Holy Spirit I'm going to give to you here for, for another example. The Holy Spirit... Manifestation given to the Spirit, the word of wisdom, another word of knowledge, another faith of the Spirit, another working of miracles, another prophecy, another discernment of the Spirit, the tongues, and the interpretation. But all these work with the self same Spirit, dividing every man severally as he will. Read that with me. But all these work with that same, that one and the same self same Spirit during every man, severally as he will. So I say amen. Okay, what this means is the Holy Spirit does not delegate his authority to nobody else. Okay, you don't do that. When the delegated authority comes
come from the Holy Ghost. The message, the Word of God, is what delegates the authority to you. Cross died for you, or Christ died for you on the cross. That delegates the authority to you to receive salvation. But now, watch this. The Holy Ghost does, does all the displacement of the Holy Spirit. Why? Well, it's His. Everybody say it's His. So He's going to displace it where it's supposed to be. So, I can never tell you, get on up here and I'll pray for you and you'll start talking in tongues. No. By the Word of God, no. You see, that's when you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost. You can't take Jesus' place, you cannot take the Holy Spirit's place. It ain't no wonder we can't get a prayer place to fit foot, footlights in heaven. So many different things that the church is in agreement on to be disagreement with. Read it. Don't put nothing in there that ain't there. But I'm going to read that again. It says, But all these work of that one and the self same spirit, dividing every man his several, several as he will. Now, it doesn't mean that men and women can go put it on somebody else. You said the Holy Spirit will put it on somebody else. There's no reason in the world why that Janie should go to Mavis and say, the Lord told me that you're filled with the Holy Ghost and you're going to be somebody that laid hands on the sick and they're going to recover. The Bible already told her that. The Bible already told her that. All the Holy Ghost does is confirm the Word. That's it. It don't make her some holy prophet or something like that because she can do that. The Word of God says, if you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. didn't say, if you are filled with the Spirit of the Lord and you believe it the way that we do, you come on up, we'll pray for you, and you're going to get healed. We was in the church one time when they had communion in the church, and they said, if you apply to take the practice, we'll have communion with us, you're welcome. We may just got up left. But I know we wasn't in the right faith and practice in that box. Start holding your doctor up over the communion service of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was in the other in a room with one of them was going to take it and go out right, right there and a few moments later and sell come out with 30 pieces of silver. I knew right then I didn't need to be in that bunch. Get me out of here. It wasn't long. He wasn't in there no more either. <laughs> he was gone. I was Still doing the work of the Lord. But I wasn't getting caught up. At one time, the Southern Baptist Association in, in, uh, in, uh, Cincinnati, or in uh, Dayton, I'm not going to mention his name because he was, he, he turned out to be just too fool for me. They didn't like me. Like they didn't like me here in Galilee. But I stand on the rock, buddy. I don't fall. Two, four. I fall down and hit the rock. That's as far as I'm going to go. He didn't like me here. He didn't like me. Until he viewed my ministry and seen the way that I was going, seen how the church girls was going. I'd been to Kentucky and I'd come back. I was in there at the Sunday school for the homecoming. He asked me to preach the Sunday morning message. I preached Sunday morning and come down. And I controlled with him, asked him to pray over the food. And he stood up and he said, Lord, I thank you for Brother Ross. He said, one, now we're talking about a scholar. One that believes the word, will stand on the word, and he will not be in your power. We thank you for the example that he gives us. At the same time, some of the church members were trying to figure out how to get me back out of that church. And one of them was because he was a musician. And he was jealous. I don't know why. 
but I knew it was. I knew it was. Because it happened when I went on up the hill to another church where we intended to do, and it started there. He's the one I had to recruit all the kids. Those things that we claim to be in our spirit, that the Lord is working with and working on. I know it's a little bit long, church, but we got to get this over with. So I'm going to another one next week. But I can say this from the bottom of my heart. There's not one time that I've been set down and been comfortable if I said something that was out of the foundation of the Word of God. Never. Because I always figured I'd get a payday. I'll get a, a reproof from God. I don't have to have it for you. He'll let me have it. For if I say something that's wrong, it's not uplifting to the congregation of God. And if, even though this morning a lot of it had been put down to where that it may seem like this, that uh, I was getting on to the church. No. 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 I love the church. I'd have the same message this morning. I don't care what church I'm in. I go to Catholic Mass and I preach this message. I'm serious. It doesn't matter to me because it's a message that the Spirit of God gave me. You ain't going to shut me up on that. I ain't apologizing for it. If I get it on my own, I may go apologize. But if the Holy Spirit gives it to me while I'm standing up here, you forget that. Honey. I know where it comes from. Just like I know where my prayer of faith comes from when I pray earlier today about the people. 